Teresa, what the hell? I just got out of a meeting with my boss. He said you told him I'm quitting my job because of my marriage? How could you do this to me? How could you stab me in the back like that? Oh, hello, Lydia. You seem upset. But you don't seem to realize the situation you're in. What are you talking about, Teresa? You married my precious son, and you became part of our family. And you think you can keep working at that little pathetic company? That's unacceptable. That's an insult to our family name. A wife's role is to serve her family and her husband. You should be devoted to Bryant. I love Bryant. But that doesn't mean I have to give up my career. We agreed on that when we got married. I love my job. I won't let you disrespect me like this. How can you love working at that mediocre place? Don't you have any pride? Brian's salary alone is not enough for us to live comfortably. That's why we have decided to have two incomes. I told you this before we got married. Oh, did you? I don't remember you asking for our permission to live separately. We expected you to move in with us after the wedding, but you refused, saying it would be too far from your work. And I told you many times that I want to keep working so that I can support our life together. Well, things have changed. Bryant has agreed to quit his job and join the family business. What? He never told me that. So it makes no sense for him to stay away from home. He's already packing his things to move here. He's moving? Without telling me? I'm going to your apartment in a few hours to help you pack too. Teresa, this is crazy. You can't just make these decisions without consulting me. We have to hurry up and pack everything today so that you can move in with us this weekend. That's why I went to your office yesterday and handed in your resignation letter. I wanted to make sure everything was ready for you and Bryant to join our family. But you're so ungrateful. You don't even thank me for all I've done for you. I told you I don't want to live with you. Did you forget that conversation too? Bryant made this decision. Can't you at least let us talk about this as a couple? Can't we decide after that? You can't just dump this on me and expect me to agree. No, you can't. It's already done. All you have to do is obey us and do what we say. Just go with the flow, my dear. Go with the flow. Are you kidding me? You're ignoring my feelings completely? It's like I don't matter at all. You think you can have a say in this? You're the wife. You have no choice. If I lived with you, it would take me hours to get to work. That's why you have to quit. Brian is coming back to be the president of the family business. You're going to be the wife of a big shot. That's not the point, Teresa. It doesn't matter what you say. It's already decided. You can whine all you want, but it's final. Oh, and by the way, when you move in, you'll be doing most of the housework. But you know that, right? Since you're the wife. How do you expect me to do the chores when I have to work and commute for hours? I'll have no time for myself. You're the one who insists on working, right? If you want to keep your job, you'll have to find a way to manage your duties. Don't worry, I'll take care of the pecking for you too. You should be grateful for what I do for you. I have a meeting today, so I'll be home late. Please don't touch any of my stuff. Let me have some control over my own things. And please, I beg you, let me talk to Bryant about all of this before we make any final moves. This is too much for me to handle. I need some time to think. Teresa, are you even listening to me? Hey, when are you coming home? I'm starving and mom wants to know what's for dinner. I have to run an errand on my way home, so I don't know when I'll be back. Can you just warm up the leftovers in the fridge? There's also some beef stew on the stove. What? Are you kidding me? You're my wife. Why don't you get in the kitchen and do your job for once? I am doing my job. I'm so tired after the long commute, but I still cook for you and your parents every day. How is that not doing my job? I don't care about that. You chose to keep your job just to feed your ego. Your duty is at home. I won't let you neglect your role just because you want to work. Making us eat leftovers is not being a good wife. 
You call that cooking? That's just being lazy. Why don't you try cooking something before you criticize me? I've never seen you lift a finger in the kitchen. My mom said the housework is the wife's responsibility. I agree with her. It's not my business or my duty. I get up at 4 a.m. to cook and clean and go to work at 5.30 a.m. every morning. I come home after 9 p.m. to do laundry and prepare food for the next day. I go to bed after midnight every night. I only get four hours of sleep every day. Four hours. You and your parents work in the building next to the house. All you have to do is get up a bit before eight and walk to work at nine. You can take lunch breaks whenever you want. And sometimes you come home before 5 p.m. But I've never seen any of you do any housework. Why should we do your work? You're the damn wife, Lydia. It's not our job. It's yours. Don't you care about the house that you live in? Why don't you care about it? I thought we agreed when we got married that we'd both keep working. You do your work as a wife. I do my work as the heir of my dad's construction company. Isn't that what we agreed on? Don't lie, Bryant. You know we never agreed on that. You ignored all of my wishes and went behind my back. I didn't want to move. But you and your mom packed all of our stuff while I was at work. You betrayed me. You and your whole family betrayed me. I'm my parents' only son. I have to do what they want. Bryant, please think about me. Think about us more. What do you mean? I'm freaking out right now. I've been feeling sick lately, and I thought it was because of the lack of sleep, but I found out that I'm pregnant. You're pregnant? Are you sure? I thought I was sick because I was adapting to the new place, but I guess I was wrong. I'm three months pregnant. For the sake of our baby and our marriage, I need you to put us first. You're pregnant? That means we'll have a successor for the family business. Mom is going to be over the moon when she finds out. I have to tell her right away. Hold on. It's only the first trimester. I want to wait until the pregnancy is safe before I tell anyone. Too late. <laughs> I already posted it online that we're expecting. You did what? You posted it online? I thought you were going to tell your mom first. Not the whole damn world. Well, you are pregnant, right? It's amazing news. Why not share it? How can you be so careless? Mom has been nagging me about grandkids and heirs to the family business. She's going to be thrilled when she hears this. Bryant, once the baby is born, I can't live like this anymore. And I definitely don't want to live in that house. Why not? Mom will help us with the baby. Isn't it better if we're living with them? That house is not fit for two families. There's not enough space. The house is old and the stairs are steep and there's stuff everywhere. What if the baby swallows something they shouldn't? It's not a suitable place to raise a child. I turned out fine there. I'm saying it's not a suitable place for us to raise a child. We have to raise our child in a place that suits us. So you're saying you want to move out of my family's house? If you care about our future, then yes. From finding a nursery for our baby to my job, living at your parents' house is not a feasible option for us. My mom will never agree to that. Forget what your mom thinks. What do you think? I want to know what you think. This is not about your mom. This is about us, Bryant. This is about our family. I think we should do what my mom wants. Bryant, my OBGYN said I should consider my living situation. I'm going for a checkup right now. Where's the checkup? My mom wants to know. It's okay. I'll go by myself. Come on. It's her first grandchild. She wants to grill the doc with questions. Just back off, Bryant. Let me handle this by myself until the pregnancy is stable. And please, think about moving out of your parents' house. If you love me and our unborn child, that's the least you can do. All right, all right. I'll think about it.
I heard you finally gave birth to the baby, and it's a healthy baby boy. Yes, the baby is here. He's a big and robust baby. He was a little too big, so it was a grueling delivery, but everything is okay now. I let you go back to your own parents until you had the baby, but I want you to come back as soon as they discharge you from the hospital and bring our grandson home. The doctor said I need bed rest for at least a month because of how difficult the delivery was. I plan on staying here until I heal. Are you trying to keep the baby away from us? I can't believe how self-centered you are. If you care so much about the baby, then why haven't you visited me even once since I came here? Our family runs a construction company. We don't have time to make trivial visits. We have work to do. You have work? Don't you have the weekends off? And besides, it's too far away. I'm only a two hour drive away. Oh, shut up. Lydia, stop being so immature and bring my grandson back. And also, you have to pack your things and move out as soon as you get back. What are you talking about? Moving out? Who's moving out? You, of course. Oh my God. Are you letting me move out of the house? Yes, you can. I can't believe Bryant agreed to this. I thought he would never take my side on this. He thought about it very carefully and decided that the best option is for you two to get a divorce and move out of the house. Wait, who said anything about a divorce? I want you to bring the heir to our business back to our home, pack your bags and leave. I don't understand. What are you saying? You want me to leave my child with you? And why would I leave Bryant? While you were back lounging around at your family home, Bryant found a marvelous new woman who was perfect for our family. I was on maternity leave to have my baby. What do you mean lounging around? But before I even get to that, what do you mean? Bryant met someone? He fell in love with a woman who comes from a family of eminent politicians. They started dating and clicked right away, and they're already thinking about getting married. This can't be true. I just had a baby. The woman can't get pregnant herself, so I want her to raise my grandchild as her own son. Since we're a construction company, having a connection to a family of politicians is perfect for us. So I want you to divorce Brian and move out of the house. Are you saying Bryant has been cheating on me? Bryant was messing around with another woman while I was out here by myself enduring labor? Yes, that's right. He started seeing her before you went back to your parents' house to be exact. While you were at work, she would come over to our house and go out on dates with Bryant. The two of them were nurturing their love while you were away. I guess you didn't notice, given you chose to leave. How oblivious you are. He was cheating on me while I was at work? So you and Bryant's father knew about this? You allowed this to happen? I'd much rather have Bryant marry her and create ties with her family. It's much more beneficial to us than him marrying a nobody like you. Honestly, at this point... I'm not surprised by anything you say. Now, of course, this won't be for free. We're done with you. I'll give you 30,000 for you to leave my son and the child with me. Are you sure? That's so generous of you. Huh? Why do you suddenly sound so happy? I'm still in shock that you're offering me such a generous amount of $30,000. That's way more than what most people get in adultery cases like this. And considering that Bryant and I have barely been married for a few months, $30,000 is a huge amount for me to walk away with. I'm well aware of that. So you'll agree to leave him alone, right? You won't bother him or try to get back with him ever again? Of course. I just have to sign the divorce papers and sort out the custody issue with Bryant. I would appreciate it if I could have a chance to talk to him privately about this. 
I don't want you to interfere with the divorce process or try to influence his decision. Fine, if that's what you want. If you still have feelings for Brian and want to have a final conversation with him before everything is over, I won't stop you. I'll let you have your moment. I don't want to jeopardize my health, so I'd prefer if Brian came here to talk to me. I don't want to travel or go anywhere else. Gosh, I can't believe how stubborn you are. You're making this harder than it needs to be. Don't you want to get this over with as soon as possible? Then it makes more sense for him to come to me than for me to wait until I'm well enough to travel. That way, we can finalize everything quickly and move on with our lives. All right, fine. I'll hand him the divorce papers and tell him to come to you. I'll make sure he knows what he needs to do. Thank you for your cooperation. I appreciate your willingness to work with me on this. Ah, everything is going according to plan. I'm so close to getting what I want. It's not even a year since Bryant and I tied the knot. But thanks for everything, I suppose, huh? I think you should be the one expressing gratitude to me. After all I've done for you and your family. But that's irrelevant now. It doesn't matter anymore. Yes, it is. Thank God I never have to see you and your stubborn, pathetic attitude ever again. You're out of my life for good. Whatever. Goodbye. I hope you're happy with your choices. Lydia, why haven't you come back here yet? It's been three months since we gave you the money. When are you bringing my grandson to me? He's the heir of our family and business. He belongs with us, not you. Hi, Teresa. It's been a while since we last spoke. Don't act so casual with me. We paid you the money and it's been three months. The baby should be able to leave the house by now. He's not your child anymore. He's ours. Hurry up and bring him to us and cut ties with Brian. Enough is enough. You've taken enough from us. What are you talking about? I have full custody of my baby. He's my child and no one else's. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean you have full custody of the baby? How did that happen? I thought Bryant has full custody. That was the deal we made. Oh, gosh. I guess you haven't heard anything from Bryant. He never told you, did he? When Bryant and I met to discuss the conditions of our divorce, we decided that I would have full custody of our child while Bryant pays child support. We settled on this in the presence of our lawyers. It's been set in stone for months now. There's nothing you can do to change it. That can't be. That's impossible. Brian hasn't mentioned any of this to me. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't betray me like that. I guess Brian wasn't particularly interested in having children to begin with. He never wanted to be a father. He agreed to pay the child support in the alimony up front and handed me full custody of the baby when we signed our divorce papers. He didn't even put up a fight. He just wanted to be free of you and your family. You're lying to me, right? And plus, we've only paid you the alimony. We didn't pay you any child support. That wasn't part of the agreement. Teresa, maybe you should take a look at your family and your company's financial situation a little better from now on. You might be surprised by what you find. What are you suggesting, Lydia? What are you talking about? Lydia, what are you trying to say? I definitely received both the alimony and the child support in full. Both of those payments came from your husband's bank account. Don't you know about this? Don't you keep track of your own money? That's impossible. I don't know any of this. When did this happen? How did this happen? I doubt Bryant had much money to his name. After quitting his previous company and joining the family business, he probably didn't have enough to pay me what he owed me. But I don't really care who paid me the money from which accounts, since I already got what's mine. 
and I'm not giving it back. Oh my goodness. Are you saying Brian used my husband's account to pay you? Are you saying he stole from us? He stole from his own family. Wasn't the business already in the red for a while? I hope Brian didn't run the business dry by paying me. I hope he didn't ruin everything you worked so hard for. I just checked our accounts and it's all gone. Oh my God, all of it. Even the investments from the bank that took months to finalize. All of it is gone because of you. You took everything from us. You ruined us. Ugh, Teresa, come on. This is all for your grandchild. The grandchild you were so excited to welcome into your family. The grandchild you wanted to groom for your business. Every single penny will be used to give him the life he deserves. A life away from you and your toxic influence. It's fine. We can figure out a way to get the money back. We have a backup plan through the marriage with the politician's daughter. Once we have that connection, we'll have more jobs at our construction company and we can always get money from that woman's family. They're rich and powerful. If you thought this would hurt us, you're wrong. We're tougher than that. This doesn't hurt one bit. If it's money, we have more than you can ever imagine. So enough with the nonsense, Lydia. Give me the child now. He's not yours. He's ours. Ugh, but wasn't that politician arrested recently? He's under investigation for money laundering or corruption or something along those lines. I have a feeling whatever ties you were hoping for might have gone up in smoke, Teresa. I have a feeling you might have made a huge mistake. What? He was arrested? If I remember correctly, it was all over the news. There were always rumors going around that he was involved in some sneaky money laundering schemes. I heard the IRS and the FBI are all moving in on him. They're going to expose him and everyone who worked with him. Are you sure everything is as okay as you say it is? Are you sure you're not in trouble? This can't be happening. No way, this can't be real. How am I now hearing of this? I thought if Bryant married into that family, would have a secure future and would never have to worry about money again. I thought would be set for life. Oh, if it's actually some sort of fraud case, I think everyone that has ties with him is going to be investigated, including your husband's company and you, of course. They're going to find out everything you've done everything you've hidden. What investigation? What could they possibly have on us? We didn't do anything wrong. We didn't break any laws. We're innocent, I tell you. They're going to dig up everything, Teresa. Your cash flow, your financial statements, your contracts, your investments. You're dealing with a dirty politician here. He's been laundering money through your company. And you know it. If they find out you're involved, you're done for. What choice did we have, Lydia? He had us concerned. He threatened us. He blackmailed us. We had to play along. Wow, you're not even trying to deny it. It's not my problem anymore. I got what I came for. I don't care what happens to you or your husband. Oh God, Lydia, please don't leave me like this. They're going to take everything from us. Our money, our company, our son. We'll lose it all. Tell me this isn't real, Lydia. Sorry, Teresa, but this is your reality now. And I don't want any part of it. I'm just glad I got out when I did. I can't wait to see your husband's face on the news when they arrest him. Lydia, you bitch. How can you do this to us? How can you be so cruel? Give us back the money you took from us, the alimony and the child support, and bring back my grandson. He belongs with us. No way, Teresa. I'm never going back to that hellhole, and neither is my son. And by the way, Bryant has a new wife now. Did you know that? 
I don't care about that whore. I'll make sure she pays for what she did. I'll make Bryant divorce her and come back to me. He'll do whatever I say. He's still mine, Lydia. He's still a part of this family. And I won't let him go down with the ship. I'll save him. And us all. You're delusional, Teresa. It's too late to save anything. You said it yourself. The business is bleeding money. There's no way you can fix this mess. You're doomed, Teresa. You and your family. Just face it. It's over. You can help us, Lydia. You have to. You used to work in finance, right? You know how to cook the books. Come back and erase any trace of our involvement. Make it look like we're innocent. Hurry, Lydia. They're coming for us. Do you want to be responsible for ruining our lives? Are you insane, Teresa? Do you think I'm going to risk my freedom for you? I'm done with you, Teresa. And, of course, your family. I want to live a peaceful life with my son, away from all this drama. That's my grandson, Lydia. That's Brian's son. You can't keep him from us. We have a right to him. Brian gave up his right to my son when he cheated on me. I have full custody of him now. He doesn't even know his father. He's never seen him. He doesn't need him. Fine, Lydia. Go ahead and live your separate life. I'll let you do that. But you have to bring Bryant back to me. He's probably bored out of his mind with you. You're on leave, right? You have nothing better to do. I'm busy raising my son, Teresa. That's more important than anything else. I don't want anything to do with you or your business. And I can't help you with this. This is beyond me. Anyway, goodbye, Teresa. This is the last time you'll hear from me. I'm meeting with my lawyer to sue that woman who Bryant slept with for emotional damages and to get a restraining order against you and your family. No, Lydia, no. This can't be happening. Where did I go wrong? Is this because I chose her over you? If I knew this would happen, I would never have let Bryant near her. Lydia, are you listening to me? Lydia, somebody help us. Please, Lydia, don't do this to us. Don't leave us like this. The money laundering case exploded in their faces like a bomb, and the authorities didn't stop there. They went after Bryant's father's company too, which was the source of their wealth and power. They uncovered the whole family's involvement, from Bryant's parents to Bryant himself, in a complex web of money laundering and tax evasion, which spans across multiple countries and accounts. The company was shut down on the spot, and all their assets were frozen. And the worst part? Bryant used the bank's money, which he had illegally obtained, to pay me the alimony and child support, which he owed me for abandoning me and our son. Now his whole family, including that woman he cheated on me with, who thought she had won the jackpot, are staring at the abyss of poverty with no hope of escape. 